Welcome back to part two. In this video, I'm going to go over how to warp your loom for double width using a single rigid heddle. But before we begin with how to warp your loom, I want to circle back really quick to make a correction to the previous video. I showed you this formula and told you to use it to calculate the width you need to warp your loom. Then I said to take the number you get from this formula and add 12 to it in order to figure out how long your warp thread should be. And that was correct for my project because I'm weaving a square. But if your project is not a square, you actually need to run this formula a second time. So let's take a real quick look at how you would do that. As you see here, these formulas are pretty much exactly the same with the difference that instead of X here, we have XV. And instead of solving for L, we're solving for LV. And we also add in a number at the end of this part of the formula to account for loom waste. Um, so to make it also really clear kind of where I'm getting the, this X and XV number, I drew this right here. So you can see X is the final width you want your finished project to be. And XV that you use over here to get the vertical length is the final length of your project, not including the fringe. Um, further, I use 12 because in my experience, when I weave on most of my rigid heddle looms, I end up with about generally about five inches on the front beam left over and about you know six to seven inches left on the back beam. Um, but depending on how you tie on to your loom, um, and how close you, you end up weaving at the end, you, you may want to make this number a little bit bigger as well. It really depends on, on how you weave uh, personally, but 12 is a good place to start. Um, if you wanna be super safe, you could add 24, which would give you up to a foot of extra on each end. Um, that is ball your court. So here's the end of this part and let's get to the meat and potatoes of this video, how to actually warp your loom for double width. So because we're doing two layers of fabric, we need to know where the middle of the fabric is. Um, so I'm going to be doing a houndstooth pattern. This involves warping uh, two picks of one color and then two picks of a different contrasting color. Like I said in the last video, I plan to warp for 240 picks total. My pattern is a repeat of four picks, two purple, two pink. This is important because when I divide 240 by four, I get 60, which is an even number. If, for example, I was planning on doing 244 picks, I would have to figure out the middle a little bit differently because 244 divided by 4 is 61, an odd number. So let's go ahead and play those two scenarios out. So the first scenario is what I plan to be doing, which is an even number of repeats of the pattern, or 60 repeats of this pattern right here. If I wanted to be a hundred percent careful I could actually write out this repeating pattern 60 times to be a hundred percent sure I have it exactly right but I'm just going to trust math here and do uh, four repeats so what we're going to do now is we're going to imagine that this these four repeats are the the total of everything I'm going to be warping right here. And that this is actually a representation of my final piece of fabric with the weft threads or the threads that go this way kind of invisible right now. So if we take this and we fold it in half right after the first two repeats of the pattern or the middle, um, what we get is how the fabric is going to lie or how the warp threads are going to lie on my loom. And if we open it back up again and flip it over, so now this is the uh, right side of the fabric and when we flip it over now it's going to be on the left. You can see that this gives me, I wrote down here, how we're going to be drawing the threads through the, the slots here. So again, this is kind of how the fabric's going to lie. And you can see the first two picks of purple 
are going to go through the first slot, which is actually right here on the outside of the loom. And then the last two picks of the entire fabric way over here are actually going to go through uh, the rightmost one as well. And then the second slot here is going to get these two and these two. And the third slot's gonna get these two and these two and so on and so forth. And if you see here, it means for my first pick, I'm gonna do purple on the bottom layer, pink on the top layer, and then the next slot is pink on the bottom layer, purple on the top, and then that pattern right there repeats ad nauseum until I get to the end over here. So that's what happens with houndstooth um, for an even number of repeats. So let's go ahead and look again as to what happens when there is an odd number of repeats. So you can see now I have my pattern and I've repeated it uh, five times. And you can see that instead of dividing in between um, repeats of the pattern, it's actually dividing right in the middle of the pattern, right? Um, but if I flip it over here, you can see as luck has it with houndstooth, it doesn't really change too much because the first pick is gonna be purple and pink and then pink and purple and then purple and pink and pink and purple and so on and so forth. The only real difference is gonna be what threads are kind of, um, what, what repeat I end on at the very end where at the very end on an odd number, it's gonna be purple on the bottom where at the end on an even number, it's going to be pink on the bottom. So for houndstooth, it doesn't really matter if it's odd or even, but again, um, make sure to, to figure out for your particular pattern where that middle is going to be and how you're going to be um, dividing your pattern as you go along so that you make sure you get the right picks here and that the middle of the fabric ends up in on the end of the heddle um, or wherever you're, you're doing the work. Because you don't have to warp the whole length when you do um, double width. So if this is your first time doing double width, I highly recommend that what you do is um, use just two highly contrasting yarns so that the bottom layer is all one color and the top layer is a different color. This makes it easy for several reasons. The first being when you slay the reed, every single pick you're gonna run um, one pass of each color. So, uh, sorry, every pick, every, every slot. So in the first slot, I'm gonna do purple and pink, and in the second slot, I'm going to do purple and pink, and so on and so on and so on, all the way across. Plus, when you get to the actual weaving, if you make any mistakes and accidentally pull threads from the bottom layer up to the top or the top down to the bottom, it's gonna be really easy to see that, that mistake before you go to unfold your fabric and realize you've tied it together in a place. Um, so there's that. Um, so at this point now, what I'm going to do is I am going to pause the video and get set up to actually warp my loom. And when I come back, I am going to do the first um, repeat, first uh, several repeats of the pattern um, that I'm doing, which is houndstooth uh, on camera, so that you can get a good idea of how you can use your little makeshift pattern here to um, figure out how to warp your loom. Okay, so I'm back, and now what we're going to do is the fun part, the part you've hopefully been waiting for, actually warping the loom. So what I'm going to point off first is that I'm going to be doing something very specific with how I pull the threads on, and this is to prevent crossing in the final project. But this may not be possible with every pattern. It's just something that that is possible with, with houndstooth, and that's that on my first pick, I'm going to be very careful to make sure that the purple thread comes through underneath the apron rod and then that the first pick of my pink thread comes on top. So just keep that in your thoughts here for a bit and it'll make more sense um, next video. And I'm just gonna run this down to the warp peg which is out of frame and take my pink 
and the same thing. So now we've got the first slot done right here. So when we look again at our pattern, I just did these two here in purple and these two in pink. Okay. So next slot, if you can see here, is pink. And we're gonna make sure that that pink thread, since it's on the bottom layer, I'm gonna try to wrap it below the heddle rod or the um, apron rod. And again, this, this may not be possible with every pattern, but with um, Hound's Tooth, I can keep it kind of even and neat and tidy back there. So I'm going to. And purple through the first, or the second slot, sorry. And that now accounts for, we've done pink here for pick number two, and then purple for the second to last one um, in the final piece. So I'm not going to reference this anymore. Hopefully that's that's clear, but I am going to look at it. So now I have to do purple bottom. And if you're wondering where my, my thread's coming from, I've just put it in some bowls on this chair over here so that they don't roll all over the floor. <laughs> So that now is the third pass. And now my fourth pass is pink first. And then purple. So with that, I have just done what I have covered in my makeshift pattern card. I have done uh, the first slot, which is two pinks, two purples. The second slot, which is two pinks, two purples. Third slot, two pinks, two purples. And fourth slot, two pinks, two purples. And if you can see here, um, I'm starting, I also have uh, the division you know, between the two layers. Again, not every pattern is gonna let you do that uh, real pretty, but houndstooth uh, does. So let's say while we're right here that this was my pattern, um, in which case I, I still have that. The difference is we'd, you know, if this was all we were doing, we would have to pull purple down to the bottom, but I feel a little bit like I'm getting ahead of myself. So what I'm going to do now is cut off the camera and finish warping all of this so that I can show you um, how to make sure that your warp threads, um, which will likely become quite crossed back here, um, how you can tidy those up before you start to wind on. So I thought I was actually done tonight <laughs> doing videos and I thought, um, but I thought I'd pause real quick um, at the halfway point and show you um, what I generally end up doing when I do double width for the whole length, which is start to run out of room on the peg where I'm warping. So how you handle that, if you encounter this problem as well, is really simple. Generally, when I get about halfway done or however far I'm done to the point where it looks like I'm starting to run out of room and I'm worried that the tension here is gonna start to yank that off, even though I tend not to put too much tension on the warp, it does, you know, all add up, is I, I just simply take it off. So I'm going to come down through the middle here. And what I do is I tie a bow or a double knot. I might just double knot it because this is nice contrasting string. So I'll be able to tell um, 
where that is, and then a square knot there, or a double knot there as well. And now I can slide that off. And at this point now, I have like a big loop here. I'm going to use that loop and make a chain by kind of grabbing here and pulling through that loop. Then putting my hand in there and grabbing again, pulling through, grabbing again, pulling through. And now at this point, I'm just going to drop that down right there and worry about it when it comes time to uh, separate the layers.